Hi, I'm Mad Mike. This time on Sharp Pointy Things, we're going to look at everybody's favorite knife, the switchblade. Now, the earliest references to switchblades are the late 1700s. Once uh, quality springs became available, somebody decided to put one in a knife. Uh, there were bayonets that were switchblades by the 1840s, and the British had a bit of an industry. They were well established early in the 1800s, but by 1840 they had become a thing although that was the first time they were actually industrialized rather than being hand-produced. You move forward to 1892 and George Schrade, Schrade Knives, had uh, invented a pocket knife that was a switchblade, uh, a little more contemporary looking, and they uh, became more popular. They're never as popular as people think they are. Everybody loves them, but not that many people actually ever went out and bought them. So let's bring the camera in and we'll look at some up close. All right, so this is a classic Italian style stiletto. Um, Maniago Italy, they produce, still do, lots of these. Uh, there's a latch so that it won't open. You don't want to pop it open in your pocket, that causes problems. And a sharp knife in your pocket is um, potentially inconvenient. You press the button, it opens. You pull back on the bolster because it actually locks open. And then you press it back against the spring. Now this is a Japanese variant with a folding guard. You press the button, the blade opens, and the guard pops into place. Um, you, I'm going to have a video on knife fighting and why it's a really bad idea to get into a knife fight. And This is clearly made like that for fighting, and it's a dumb idea. But the knife is still cool. I mean, they are cool. Now for a long time, actually it still does, US law, <coughs> Uh, we'll come back to that, prohibits the importation and the mailing of switchblades. But you can bring in a kit that has a, or could, that has a separate spring. You place the spring in and you hammer the rivet in yourself. And this one was put together in the U.S. And it's actually, as far as these things go, reasonably good quality. Now those are all largely uh, versions of the Italian style. This is a Spanish style, where you have a, a switch that uh, also is the, uh, the lock. Now, for a while, one of the things I uh, sold, they uh, unfortunately got away with these tiny little keychain switchblades, which are so cute. And uh, theoretically, because you know, they're not really sharpened, uh, these things were sold by the millions. Um, the, the government really didn't bother trying to crack down on these. It's not like you're going to hurt anybody with them in the first place. Um, they're, they're just really cute. They're you know, pockets, well, less than pocket-sized, keychain-sized switchblades. Now, some of you may have seen, <clears throat> this is a military issue. This was issued to paratroopers, uh, pilots for bailout gear. <clears throat> you have a rope-cutting bail there, and that should have been the part that opened automatically, <clears throat> because if you're cutting shroud lines to get yourself down from the tree where your parachute's entangled, that's the one you need. But, it's a, a switchblade. People get these, the springs eventually wear out. If you send one to Camillus, uh, they will have to seize it. These, are, these were officially government property. Uh, you, you will not get it back. Uh, there is an updated version of this that has a helical spring rather than the flat spring that functions better and has got a slightly better tip on it. They still issue something like this. Um, and like our episode on survival knives, it's bright orange. So if you drop it, you can find it. Uh, you want to make sure that you can get hold of your knife in an emergency. Now, there were a couple of workarounds. When, when switchblades were illegal in, in a lot of places, this is a folding knife. Opens with the thumb stud and has a lock there. But if you press on the inlay here, it's actually a switchblade. These were rather illegal in certain areas, uh, but nevertheless got sold in certain areas. People wanted knives that opened quickly, and uh, that's what they went with. <coughs> there were also legal, completely legal workarounds. <coughs> this is a lever opening knife. You press the lever, and the blade opens. It's useful to have a knife that you can open with one hand. Uh, you know, this hole that, uh, the only reason you're doing that is to use as a weapon. No, there's times you have something in one hand and you need to use the other hand for cutting, and you pull out a knife. Um, I've got 
uh, a knife with an access lock that I can open and close with one hand because I'm holding something in the other hand <coughs> and I need to get to what I'm doing. And <coughs> lately, the last uh, couple of decades actually, the out the front knife has become very popular. Uh, these were developed, the, the knife instead of swinging out the side, shoots out the end. I do not like these. I don't like them at all and this is why. Um, it, it's not working. Uh, you're working two springs against each other. Eventually, one of them is going to fail. And by eventually, I mean usually not that long after you purchase it. I, I don't know what the fascination with these things is. It doesn't stick out enough to actually cause any harm. You, know, you can't stab someone with it. It will just bounce. Uh, they're designed specifically to do that. And uh, then the, the connections get really, really wonky. And this is a similar thing, and this is just plain silly. Um, uh, in some states, this is a double felony. Um, I mean, you've got knuckles, and they're bulkier than they should be, and not as nice a grip as they should be. And then you've got a, a switchblade dagger. And, you know, daggers have their place, but you can't put any kind of pressure on the back of the blade. You can't put your thumb there. This is... <coughs> This is frankly silly. Um, nevertheless, people will buy them, so I, I will sell them. Uh, one of the other items that was incorporated into all the legislation, this is a gravity knife. It just drops in and out. It's just got to... and you can flip it out. And those are based on this. This is a clone of the German Fallschirmjäger knife that they issued to paratroopers for cutting themselves loose of uh, suspended lines. It's also got a marlin spike for untangling knots. Um, yeah, mechanically it's a lot simpler, <clears throat> it's a little bulky, but this actually makes sense. You need one hand to get the knife out, you just flip it, and uh, then you can proceed to get things done. So, you know, switchblades were developed <coughs> in various sizes all the way up to <coughs> massive bayonets. And they, they weren't particularly common, but they were well understood. Uh, a lot of people carried them because they were useful. Uh, sailors carried ones typically with a blunter point, because if they're hanging onto a rope or trying to lash a rope with one hand and need to cut something, they've got to open the knife with one hand. Uh, same thing with the gravity knife became popular for that. <coughs> There's all kinds of weird rumors. I heard one that they were invented for scraping dried feces off sheep on the farm. I don't know where that came from. Um, you know, they were invented in order to you know, stab people to death. It's like, well, you can stab people to death with anything. Um, knitting needles, kitchen knives. Uh, some of those are obviously a little more <coughs> intended towards being a fighting knife than a utility knife. Some of those other ones are completely utilitarian. It entirely varies. Uh, they were never hugely popular, but they were well known in culture. And then in the 50s, you had a bunch of uh, um, really bad movies come out. Blackboard Jungle, Rebel Without a Clue. And the Ladies Home Companion started a campaign that we needed to ban these horrible weapons that were the preferred weapon of street gangs. And some congressmen introduced it. Uh, State Department opposed it. Commerce Department opposed it because... How are they going to enforce it? And it really wasn't that big a deal. Uh, the number of people who were actually being stabbed to death with switchblades versus, say, kitchen knives was, was minimal. But they kept at it. They reintroduced it the next year. And so the Switchblade Act of 1958 came into play. And we still struggle with it. These have to be shipped by UPS. We can't send them through the mail. Um, theoretically, they're only legal if they are not a substantial item of commerce. So, theoretically, these companies producing them by the thousands are afoul of the law, but no one's done anything. <clears throat> there were uh, legal decisions on this. <clears throat> Even the Supreme Court said that these knives could be opened quickly, possibly as fast as five seconds. I just opened that the regular way in under a second. Clearly, there was not a lot of scholarship actually being done on this subject. Let's make some close-ups. So here's that Spanish-style lock. And you can theoretically open it that way, but it's actually better to pull the lock back and do that. There's the spring. 
down inside. And when you press the release, you compress the spring. Uh, something I've noticed uh, when selling these is people want to test it by doing this. They, they well, I, I don't want to, you know, damage it by opening it. It's like it's designed to fly open. That is, that is the design. You, you, there is no reason to baby the thing. And here's the standard Italian style. Now, so there's a, a lock to stop it from opening. It opens, and you can see the spring there. So the bolster rolls and lifts up the blade catch, and that latches into the lever. Let's open that again and close it. You'll see the button pop up as it locks in place. <clears throat> this Japanese style, this one wasn't made in, J in Japan. Oh, sorry, Japanese style, but this one was not made in Japan. And the guard folds open and is reasonably in place. Again, flat spring at the back. That one you just press the button to unlatch it. The hidden one is really neat because this is both a standard folding knife, lock back with a notch to lock it, or, and it's actually not super strong keeping itself closed, you press there, and there's the spring that popped up. So I'll close it so you can see that. There's the spring. Now fastened. I can actually do that and pop the spring up. And the same thing on the aircrew knife. Long thin spring in the back, and the new ones have a coil spring inside the grip. Um, Boker did a series of knives with a button in the handle that <clears throat> causes them to fly open. The uh, the usual legal language is uh, blade activated by a button or other device set in the handle. So if you're opening a torsion-assisted knife because of the stud, and there's a positive spring to keep it closed until you reach a break point where it opens, that's not a switchblade. Uh, although some states say it is. Uh, the Knife laws are worse than gun laws. There is no standard. There is no real protection. Uh, American Knife and Tool Institute is trying to get that into play. But, uh, you know, whatever some local area jurisdiction decides is the law. And it varies all over the place. Uh, Oregon, among other states, actually has a state Supreme Court decision stating that this is obviously just a technological development of the knife. Uh, it would be assumed that as time goes on, knives would become better, more sophisticated, more useful, and therefore were legal. Uh, I don't know how many other states, I, I can look it up easily, but I haven't. How many other, but there, a few states actually had state-level decisions. <laughs> uh, at the other end, there's a case in North Carolina where because switchblade knives lock open, someone had a standard buck folding hunter in his car under a sheet of paper, and the police wanted to charge him with something, so they charged him with having a switchblade because the knife locked open. It's a buck folding hunter. You need two hands to open it because it's got a nail groove. And the court upheld that the knife that locked open was a switchblade. Uh, I think that went down on appeal, but it shouldn't have. Um, I believe Florida had a ruling that switchblades were just knives. But then they had some judge that decided that, well, pretty much anything was a, was a switchblade. Uh, so there, there's all kinds of drama and mystique and everything else about what is functionally just a knife. So you know the drill below, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff so we can do more of these videos. Uh, the website is Sharp Pointy Things. It's largely custom stuff and vintage stuff. It varies from time to time, but these videos are meant to be informative. Thank you very much.